This is the first time really that we've been able to look at the surface of Mars in this kind of detail. It kind of backs up what we said at the time that uh, an awful lot of things had to go right. There was a long series of events, each of which had to work perfectly for things to uh, for, for things for the mission to be a success, and uh, how even NASA with all its billions of pounds that it threw into its Mars project, didn't succeed on the first attempt. So, and looking at the, the hints we have now of all the, all the things that appear to have gone right, we, we, it seems just like we were inches away from a successful mission. So it's slightly heartbreaking, really. And it's a bit heartbreaking that Colin Pillinger, who masterminded the whole thing, isn't uh, with us still to see today's, uh, today's uh, hints of success. We got involved actually when it was still just a cardboard model in the Open University lab somewhere. And Alex and I, Alex the bass player in the band and I, we were both interested in astronomy when we were kids. And uh, we were very bored doing interviews about uh, the band because they all follow the same format. Why did you call your record this? What was it like working with that producer? What's this song about? And we'd just done, I think, three days in the States of these interviews. And we, we were talking late one night saying, wouldn't it be brilliant if we had something else to talk about in interviews? I know, let's send a, a rocket into space. We said, we could talk about that. So we spoke to our accountant, said, we want to start a British space project. And our accountant said, that's funny, I live next door to a man who put satellites into space, talk to him. So we talked to him and he said, that's funny, I know a scientist who's actually actively trying to send a probe to Mars, do you want to meet him? I said, yeah. So Colin, the kind of dishevelled mad scientist, turned up a week later, he had a little plastic box in his pocket, which he slammed down on the table, he says, that's a bit of Mars, one of the only seven that had been found on Earth at that time. And uh, it had given him some interesting ideas about a space mission. So we then resolved we would help Mar uh, Colin raise the money to turn his cardboard model into, a, into an actual mechanical masterpiece, which we did. The idea was he, he, the, when the lander, if it had finally unfurled and everything had worked as, uh, as it should have done, it had to send a signal back to Earth to say that everything was shipshape and in working order. So Colin with his, uh, his gift for uh, uh, a good idea and a kind of publicity-worthy idea, said, well, why don't you write us a piece of music and we'll make that the signal. So that's what we did. So uh, we're not sure quite what happened. I know there's some talk that it was, uh, it was playing kind of the strangled version of the song as it, as it gently descended towards the Martian surface. I'm not entirely sure that's completely accurate. The odds against it succeeding 100% were quite overwhelming really um, but I had a sneaking suspicion that a lot would have gone right and we would eventually find it and we would eventually find out what had, what had gone wrong with the mission. It, as I have to say we do appear to have been inches away from a successful mission. Oh, I love space, I always have loved space so to be involved was so exciting and it was such a wonderful uh, Christmas that we all spent together at the at the uh, headquarters of the Open University. It was, Alex and I, Marlene Class, a bunch of people from TV, and we all spent our Christmas day at the Open University together, waiting to see if the signal was going to come. And it was, it was very disappointing when it didn't. Um, and there was a kind of protracted death knell to the project, really, because the fact that we didn't hear the signal at the first opportunity wasn't unexpected, um, because a, a lot of things had to coincide for us to, to hear the signal at the first opportunity. Um, but then when we didn't hear it the second or the third, then people's hearts started to sink. And there was that kind of awful moment where we, everyone realised actually it has all gone wrong. But, you know, who gets to, for that kind of money, £25 million is what NASA spend on a, on a feasibility study. I, truly, they spend that on a screwdriver. And we managed to get... A, a robot lander on the surface of Mars for that kind of money and most things went right and we were inches away so we really really have to try again as Colin said at the time and in Colin's memory let's have another go.